G'day everyone, it's Farmer Jay and welcome back to Derriere Farms where today we're going to be doing a comparison video between two mods. We're going to take a look at Power Tools versus Easy Dev Control. Now this wasn't a problem in previous games because we only had uh, the Easy Dev Control and I think it was only in Farming Simulator 19. But now we have two options uh, for two mods that do a very similar thing. And I've seen quite a few questions where people ask, which one should I use or should I use both? Simple answer to the last part about using both is you can, but it will cause all sorts of problems as I've seen a lot of reports of the mods clashing with each other because they do a very similar thing. The second answer to the question, and I will give you my opinion at the end of the video on which is best is basically how detailed you want to go and to figure that out we're going to go through the features of each mod and see which one offers what to you as a player and that way you can figure out which is best for your playstyle. now before we go any further um i do make regular comparison videos or technical videos or how-to videos exploring various aspects of Farming Simulator at least a couple of times a week. Um, so please hit that subscription button and hit the notification button so you don't miss a video. And subscriptions really, really help the channel out. The more subscribers we have, the quicker we can get monetized and the more often I'll be able to run competitions like giving away the Kubota pack that's coming out. Okay, back to the question at hand. Uh, let's take a look at power tools first. Alrighty, power tools is by far the easiest to use and has the simplest interface. By default, it's the F11 key, and it will allow you, right off the bat, if you're in a vehicle, to fill that vehicle, in this case, with either lime or solid fertilizer, because we're attached to a lime spreader or a fertilizer spreader. It will, if you are detached from an implement, also lets you fill the tractor with diesel. If for some reason you're running low or you just want to cheat. Um, now, I am not making this video to encourage people to cheat because both of these mods definitely allow you to do that. The whole purpose of my channel is to tell you how you can farm better and play as realistically as you want. Okay, now that we're out of the vehicle, we hit F11 again, and it's gonna allow us to spawn objects or materials. So we'll quickly run through what it allows. It allows pallets, it allows wood chips, bales of silage, bales of cotton, bales of straw, bales of grass, bales of hay, wood, and pallets. As far as the hay and silage go, you can select from the three sizes of round bales or the three sizes of square bales. <clears throat> so it's very versatile that way. Um, I would use that myself, or I did use that to compare, to create bales very quickly when I did my video on uh, TMR. That way I could figure out what ratios work best the quickest. Um, it will allow you to spawn pallets, like I said, so you got grapes, seeds, eggs, wool, flour, bread. Okay, you can pretty much spawn anything you want in terms of a pallet, as long as it is created as a pallet in the game. And then if you want to, you can turn around and sell that pallet. Again, I would use this tool to create a pallet of bread. Uh, well, not necessarily bread, but let's say strawberries or something like that. 
if I was fiddling with various mods and production rates and I want to make sure that I have enough product on my test map to keep a production facility running while I experiment with it. So that's what I would use that for. If you want a really good tool that will spawn all those most of those materials for you, <clears throat> it is the, oh, give me a second to think. There we go, I had to look it up. Uh, it is the multi-fruit buying station and it will sell you everything from wheat, barley, corn, to sunflower, to pig food, to solid fertilizer. And it does, the reason I like this one, it gives you a reasonable discount for buying in bulk. It is not totally unrealistic. You're not just getting stuff for free. I think you pay 80% of the base game price, which I think is about right for buying in bulk. Anyway, back to power tools. So the next thing it allows you to do is you can toggle super strength on and off. I like this function. Um, it also comes with a lumberjack mod, so I tend to use the lumberjack mod because it just requires a double tap with the alt key. And then I have super strength. Um, very handy if you want to move something that got in the way. Um, sometimes on Elm Creek, I'll be transporting honey to the factory and I go over the railroad crossing and the pickup truck gets stuck. Well, I can use super strength to pull that over the railroad tracks. So handy to have. Flight mode, eh, don't really use it. You can use that in conjunction with the toggling the, uh, the HUD or the heads up display on or off to take screenshots. It actually makes some pretty nice screenshots. Uh, there is a mod out there too now. I um, just got released a week or two ago. It's a camera mod, which will allow you to take photos from all sorts of different angles. It allows you to change the lens. It's very, very handy if you're into screenshots. And I keep meaning to download it. Okay, as per usual, this will allow you to add or remove money. Um, I usually do this when I start a test map if I, or if I'm doing a quick map tour just so I have enough money to buy stuff. Um, unless I'm doing a demo video like this map where I have 74 million, I don't like to cheat in money. I like to make the money the hard way. All right, you can also exit the menu and you can save game right from power tools. Those are the two remaining features. Obviously exit and save game you can do from the menu as well. So power tools is very easy to use. It's a very convenient interface and it gives you a lot of functionality. Now let's take a look at the easy dev controls. Um, uh, first, my, my very first thing I'm going to say about this is it's a lot more powerful than power tools, but it's very, very easy to screw up something in your game, uh, especially when we get into some of the more advanced settings. So you can add money, remove money, set the total amount of money you want. Uh, you can turn on extra time scales, which allows you to go past, I think it's a maximum of 360 times regular speed. Uh, it will allow you also to stop time. You can turn on flight mode just like you can with power tools. Uh, this is a nice feature the other one that doesn't have is it allows you to teleport to various fields around the map. So if you need to go somewhere quickly, it does allow you to teleport. These affect your quality of the game. Um, I prefer to adjust that myself in the advanced game settings. So 
uh, handy to have. Field of view, I haven't really experimented with that one. Clear i3D cache, I, that's a debug tool. I'm not touching debug, debug, not debug, debug tools with a 10 foot pole. Just because I don't know what they're gonna do to my game. Okay, here we go as far as the actual player goes. Um, the jump multiply, how hard you can jump. You can turn on third person view. You can turn off and on wood cutting and aim markers. Um, wood cutting is real fun without a guide as to where uh, your chainsaw is in relation to the tree. You can change how quickly you run. And again, you get into a certain amount of debug information here. Um, I'm not touching again debug and because I don't know, like I can look in the help menu and it'll tell me what it does, but I don't know what the overall um, effects are on the game. I know I have used, before this mod came out, I have tested out running with developer tools enabled from the base command line but I hit a certain key and everything goes cattywampus you can change you can spawn uh, various different objects from this menu as well just like you can in power tools um, the only difference is you can have the your map actually show where your bales are located or where your pallets are located Okay, I don't need that functionality because um, if I farmed it, I know where they are. Or even if I've spawned it, I should know where I spawned them. So again, you can spawn all of available pallets. You can add logs just like you can in power tools. One thing you have here that you don't have the ability to in power tools is the ability to tip to ground so you can make a pile on the ground of wheat barley whatever <clears throat> I don't know why you'd want to because then you have to come along and pick it up and uh, maybe maybe for testing purposes it's useful to see how quickly um, an auger picks it up and then the clear tip radius you can remove bales remove pallets I wouldn't again wouldn't be touching these because um, I accidentally if I click the wrong one I also have a cat who tends to jump on the keyboard and I don't want the wrong one being clicked at the inappropriate time remove stumps that's handy you can do that with a lumberjack mod too the only good thing about this one is it removes all the stumps on the map all right here we go the vehicle screen let's jump back into our trusty John Deere and we can see what it will do actually you don't have to be in the vehicle for this to work you just have to be close but let's get in the vehicle anyway so as you can see just like power tools it'll allow you to select between lime and solid fertilizer you can either choose fill empty or set a certain amount um, so we could go with 8,000 oh my keyboard's not working 8,000 there we go now I should have 8,000 liters of lime in the spreader nice thing about this one that power tools doesn't do too is it allows you to set the dirt levels of your vehicle as well as the damage and wear levels the wear level for those that are curious is how much paint is required it works the same way as the other one you can either set a pens percentage uh, have all or nothing you can again do the same with fuel you can either set a certain amount you can fill it or you can empty it <sighs> motor temperature and operating time um, 
Operating time, I guess, could be useful if you have a tractor like this one that has 27 hours on it. And I don't want power tools, I want the other one. Uh, and I want to set that back to five. There we go, it changed to five hours. So I have 0 0.5 hours, that's gonna reduce my maintenance cost. Um, yeah, okay. Not gonna be doing that too often. But it's useful for testing. If you wanna test how quickly vehicles run up maintenance, for example, at different hours, you can use that to test. I wish that this mod was out when I did my initial um, how to reduce maintenance costs because I wanted to see what a maintenance on a tractor with five hours was and I had to physically drive that tractor for five hours. Placeables. Oh dear. Okay. This gets rather complicated. Um, you can either use current trigger which is if you're standing right next to um, a placeable or a sell point then you can either use the menu to set the owner set state output level fill level um, problem I find with this is you need to know what the production point PP1 is for example I don't know what PP1 is so I would go and stand beside it the particular production point that I'm interested in and use current trigger. And I did watch a video for Farmer Klein. He kind of explained what different ones were on Elm Creek, but PP1 on this map is different than it is on Elm Creek. All right, this one again is your fields and farmland. It, so it allows you to basically change what's in a field and the growth period. So where is it? I want to set fruit. So let's say I want to change field five. I can set whether it's got weeds or not, whether it needs rolling. Um, I don't actually own field five, so I could turn, turn this to yes and I would own it. I can tell you what crops in there, how much fertilizer there is, how much lime. I can set stones, stones, you, um, it's handy if you want to run a stone mining business, but otherwise I don't bother with stones. Uh, the growth stage. Now remember, if you are playing with seasons turned on, if you don't select the right growth stage, the crop will get messed up, trust me. Whether the field's plowed, whether it's had herbicide applied to it or not, I'm not sure why you would want that if you can set weed state to zero, um, and whether the stubble is shredded or not. So that's those are your options for your fields. And let's look at the final one, which is the environment. You can change your day and your time, very handy. Um, you can reload the weather if it gets buggy. You can set the weather to sunny, cloudy, rainy, snowing. Okay, where's raining? I don't know. Um, I guess it will depend on the temperature. Whether, I haven't tried this, but it will depend on the temperature whether you get snow or rain. Um, whether debugging off or on, random wind waving. I don't touch any of these because, um, again, I don't know. You can add snow. You can set the snow level. We're in December, so I should be able to set Um, 0.5, remove snow, 
and I should now have snow on the, well I got a little bit of snow on the ground that's more of a frost let me try this again I don't want to add salt Try point two and see what it does. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> I knew. Okay, so this works in functions or fractions versus the um, the base game, where in the XML you set the snow level to one or two. Here it's point one or point two. So those are pretty much the differences between the two tools. So let me very quickly, um, I'm going to use power tools to do this. And I'm going to take a screenshot, which is going to be my video or my screenshot for the video. And then I'm going to give you my opinion. Um, I have had both installed since, well, each mod came out. And personally, unless I really need to do something detailed, like I'm comparing crops um, in a certain field, so I want to be able to set that field to wheat very quickly, then re harvest it, then reset it to fully grown barley, then I will use easy dev commands. Same with if I'm doing testing on vehicles, like I want to know how it performs at different levels and different hours of operation and how much damage it takes or how much wear it takes. Use, I'll use easy dev controls. And I have one specific map for that, which is Obeleron. So you will see me use it on that. Elm Creek, I just have power tools installed in case I need it. I would say for the average user, power tools is all you need, if not more than all you need. If you're just in need of the ability to spawn a pallet quickly or a bale of hay because you don't, again, for whatever reason, depending on your play style, you might want to spawn. But power tools, it's far, far easier to use than easy dev commands you don't have the option i haven't had it f up my game whereas i have had easy dev controls do that and i don't know why um so yeah i would say for the average user power tools is more than you need if you need easy dev commands Chances are you're way more experienced than the average viewer on this channel and You're probably not watching this video anyway All right on that note, like I said, please remember to like and subscribe if you found this video handy And I will see you next time. Take care. Jay